I wanted to shoot a video about diagnosing a bad fuel injector on the 2009 through 2014 Volkswagen TDI motor, the 2.0. Um, I've run into this. This is the third time now in the last couple months, and I am not a TDI expert, but I've bought six Passats in the last couple months here, and so uh, I'm starting to see some trends here. And uh, sometimes it seems like you can find info on things, but I wasn't able to find a whole lot about the injectors and this problem, so I thought I'd post a video about it. Um, I've already repaired this one, so this video isn't gonna be a test drive. I, I, it would have been kind of hard to capture what was going on in a video, so I figured I would describe it and show you what's involved with replacing an injector instead of taking it out for a spin and you know winding up just describing it verbally anyways. So basically what you experience when you have an injector that's failing in one of these is uh, that you have, it sounds like a rod knock. It, it really sounds like a fairly nasty rod knock and you have what feels like a misfire in any vehicle, gas or diesel. When you have a misfire, especially on a four cylinder, when you're down one of those four cylinders, you really have a vibration to it. And so. it only does it when it's cold. When you first hop in this thing and it's cold here in Minnesota, um, it's probably colder than in a lot of climates, and I'm not sure exactly how the outside temperature affects it, but I know when you hop in one of these things cold, uh, it will drive with that misfire and rod knock sound for one to two minutes. It varies a little bit, but once it's warmed up just a little bit, it goes away and runs great. Not another problem, but on a cold startup and driving it cold, it's got that nasty vibration, shake, and a rod knock. So those are the symptoms um, and what you want to look for is a code that pops up that tells you which cylinder it is. This car was throwing a P1006, which is torque difference, cylinder number three, limit value exceeded. So that points is at obviously the number three cylinder. So if you aren't getting that, it's going to be a little trickier. And I'm a little bit new to this. Like I said, I've run into this three times now lately, so I think I've got some pretty good info on this. Um, if you're a pro on these and have some more tips, um, by all means, put it in the comments. But I wasn't finding a lot, so I figured I'd throw a video up talking about what I found. Uh, I happen to have some used injectors around, so that makes this project a little bit easier. So here's what the injectors look like in these. Uh, on the common rails, you of course have a common rail and then a high pressure steel line that just screws onto each injector off the main rail, and then you've got a harness. Um, and then you've got, I don't know, the bleed off or whatever it's called, um, hose assembly that goes across all the injectors. So the great thing is on these common rail motors, the injectors are pretty inexpensive. I actually replaced a full set of them on one of the cars, and I bought it from an online VW parts retailer, and it cost me shipped like $570 for all four injectors. So that means they're averaging less than $150 each with tax and shipping. So that's not that bad. Um, but, uh, so like in that case, I had three good injectors off that car that are used, but uh, so, so it's pretty easy to swap them into something else you might run into. So I'm gonna zoom in a little bit here and I'm gonna show you some of the little details and another little tip you're gonna need to know about swapping these injectors out. So if you look right in here, there's one bar per pair of injectors that clamps them down. So it was a number three on this car. So here's the only one we need to get out. But what you'll need to do is you'll need a 17 millimeter wrench to loosen the lines. And they're not super tight. They need to be pretty snug, but uh, you can crack the lines loose on the injector end and on the fuel rail end. And then you can remove these two lines entirely. You have to pull both injectors to get one out. So once you've taken those fuel lines off, uh, the next thing to do is pop off this line assembly across the top. So same thing, we're gonna do two, two of the injectors. We got the little plastic clips that I use this little tool for to pop up off the top. And then we can unplug these from the injectors. We'll just get that one here for the sake of the video. And then you've got the uh, wire harnesses that plug in. A lot of times what I do, a lot of times these things get brittle. So I'll take a pick and I'll actually put it in the front end of it. Instead of trying to depress the back, I'll just put a pick in, lift it up, pull it right off. Uh, so now at that point, you're ready to unbolt it and pull it out. So it is an M8 triple square. Goes right in the top there. 
you can loosen that up, fully remove that bolt, and then you'll be able to pull the injectors up with that bar and the, the whole assembly, two injectors and the bar. Now the trick here is, and, and I'm, I'm certain that this is not by the book at all. So proceed with this at your own risk. This is a plastic valve cover here, but once you've got the lines off, you can sneak a pry bar in underneath. Basically, it'll go underneath the fitting. You're prying against the plastic valve cover, so you do not want to put a whole lot of pressure on. But if you tuck this in and apply a little bit of pressure, you can kind of wiggle the assembly back and forth, just put pressure, it's not really going to move a whole lot, but eventually you'll be able to work it out. So you need to pop both of those out, then you can remove the assembly and install the new injector, or used one in this case. Now when you put this back together, here's the big tip that you're going to want to follow. When you put it back together again, you're, you're going to want to clean off the bolt and you're going to want to use some blue thread locker on it. Um, and I use it on the threads as well as under the head. Those will loosen up. They're, they're like an M10 fastener. They're not, they're a long bolt, but they're not a big diameter. You cannot tighten those down real tight and you do not want to snap one off. But if you do not put thread locker on it, I promise you it'll loosen up. I know this from experience. So highly recommend blue thread locker on it. Tighten that thing back up. I'll put the torque spec uh, in the description down below. Um, and yeah, get it back down in there. Put your lines back on. Make sure you get your, your line assembly on the top. Get your harnesses plugged back in um, and start it up. You might get a little bit, it might start a little slower. It might shake a little, little bit as you're uh, repressurizing the whole um, fuel rail and everything. Uh, but that is uh, kind of my tips and tricks to diagnosing and replacing an injector on one of these. And uh, this one, like I said, had that P1006 code indicating a number three cylinder. It had the rod knock, it had the shake. I swapped it out with a good used one I had around and the thing runs beautifully now. Uh, not hard to do, not expensive, but it does take a little bit of care uh, so you don't break the valve cover. And, and if somebody knows of a tool, I'm sure they make a tool for pulling these out. If somebody knows of a tool, please post a, a link down in the comments or something, because uh, that would be the one thing where I feel like my way of doing it could be improved on. So yeah, post some comments. Hopefully that helps you out uh, figuring out your injector problems on this 2.0 turbo diesel from Volkswagen.